One fly, two fly, red fly, blue fly. Welcome to episode 5 of Binding of Isaac Explained, Orbitals. Today we're going to be talking about the kind of familiar that stays right by your side and protects you from bullets and from your homicidal mother. Relatable. Alright, let's start out with the flies. I've done the flies in two different ways. First of all, there are the flies that orbit you in a fixed orbit, like the pretty flies or the halo flies, and the distant fly and the attack fly. They all orbit around you using, well, sinus waves and cosinus waves. They orbit you in a perfect circle, and no matter if you go fast or slow, they're always the same distance from you. You can't rotate them around you in any way. Unlike, for example, Guppy's hairball, which, well, has physics that are attached to you, so it, it, you can swing it around your left or right. Not the, not these flies. They got a certain point in relation to you, and they're gonna go there no matter what. I guess that's like the simplest solution I could have picked for that, and I guess it works. People use it as a strategy. They predict where is this fly going to be. I'm gonna attack it by strafing around this enemy in this order, in, in its rotation, so the fly always faces towards the enemy. But then, there's the other type of fly, the blue fly. The blue fly actually goes out and seeks out an enemy, and attacks it, and then it comes back to you. And that would look really weird if it would just fly in a fixed circle around you that's based on the frame rate, just like the other flies are. So that's not gonna work, so what I did for that one is that it just goes in a circle around you. And because my skills back then weren't that good yet, it doesn't really look like they've got a consistent orbit or a consistent speed around you. And whenever you move forwards and backwards, they, they lag behind you. So you can easily tell the difference between their behavior and the other fly's behavior. So you can see that I was doing that one pretty unprofessionally. Those two flies should be orbiting you the same way, but they're not. So what I should have done is that they transition from one state of orbiting into the other state smoothly, and then it would have been great. But sadly I didn't, so there you go. Alright, now let's get into the math. Oh yeah. So a sinus wave is a wave that is perfectly symmetrical, and it goes on forever never changing. It goes from 1 to minus 1 and back again. And when you look at a car that drives in a circle and there's no perspective for some bizarre reason, then you will see the car going in a sinus wave as it goes around the circle. And equally, when you're looking above on, on, onto the car, you will see the, the sinus wave is the x coordinate and the Cosinus wave is the y coordinate. Actually, conventionally x and y would be swapped in this case, but I prefer to have x as the sinus. Why should the first coordinate have the thing that starts with co? I guess it depends on how you're measuring the angle, but I prefer measuring the angle from the top instead of from the side. But really, it, it makes little difference inside your own code. And, and the time? The time is the factor. Because the sinus is a function, and you insert well, a time or a factor or whatever you call it. It's multiplied by pi. And what you get is, well, something between 1 and minus 1, as I said. So this is how we can use the sinus and the cosinus wave to calculate the coordinates of an object that goes around in a circle. And all we have to do is put in the time of where the object is, and then we know where in the circle it will appear. And that's how we do the flies. So they, the way we do this is that we have a variable that increases every frame. A frame variable. Frame time, I just call it fray. F-R-A. Pretty weird, I guess. Well, that's what I came up with at the time. So we put, we, we, we add plus one to this, this frame time. And so every frame we calculate, X is sinus frame time, Y is cosinus frame time. But oh no, now it's going too fast. So let's multiply it by less. So X is sinus frame time times 0 0.2. It's still sinus and cosinus, but now the frame time is passing slower for the fly. There's actually an item that makes the spinny things go faster, by the way. 
don't remember which one it is. I think it's one of the angelic items. It just increases the multiplication factor of the frame time in this case. So anyways, cosinus and sinus is the method that we use for the perfect orbit that many of the familiars use. All, all but the blue flies. So we got the cube of meat, circles around you using sinus and cosinus. We got the red fly and the, the distant admiration fly and the halo flies. And you'll see they're, they're offset and they're even going negative. One of the flies goes the opposite way. Which is done by simply saying minus frame time multiplicator. So the question is, how do I do the offset ones? Because if you get a halo of flies, one's going in front of you, one's going behind you. And then if you get another pretty fly on top of that, you get three. And they fly around you in a triangle. Well, all we need for that is to find out how many flies there are. And by the way, the cube of me counts just like a fly for this purpose. So it, it'll, it'll take its place in the hierarchy of flies that orbit around you. Isn't that cool? So, well, we, we see which one of the flies was spawned first, and we see how many flies there are overall. So, so we add an offset to the frame time that's based on how many flies there are and which one of the flies it is. The first fly will have zero offset, the next fly will have 180 offset, if it has two. So then they go the position divided by the number of flies. Now normally you could get a divided by zero error here if you have zero flies, but then nobody is here to run that code, so I guess we should be safe. Now you're probably wondering, oh, so this is how you do the non-blue flies, but how do you do the blue flies? Surely they're much more complicated. And yes, well at least to me at the time they were certainly more complicated, because they could be any distance from you and any position from you, so they're not around the circle perfectly like the other flies are. So originally I tried to make these blue flies by accelerating them so that they would take the distance they have to the player and then they would just rotate that distance by 90 degrees. You can rotate a, a vector 2 by switching x and y and making one of them negative. So that would give you a vector that's 90 degrees from the original vector and the original vector being the distance. So that would make them just fly around you in a circle. Except for the fact that it didn't work out too well. I, I even made it so it, it should work fine considering it it tries to also reach the, the appropriate distance from you. But it looked weird because sometimes they would just turn around if you if you accidentally walk past them. They, they would just well, go around you the other way now because now they're on the other side of you. So I didn't like that. So what I did instead is that I actually ended up doing a pretty similar thing to the original flies with the sinus and the cosinus. And the only thing that's different now is that now they slowly lurp to the position that the, the circle predicts for them instead of going there instantly like the other flies do. So I guess I actually am not doing them that differently, but they still look really sloppy and lazy because of the, the slow lurp that's happening. By the way, if you don't know what lerping is, you can check out the previous episode where I covered it. Click here. So if I had to redo the blue flies, I already like the way they home in on enemies and they come back. But the thing is that they just pick out a random spot on the circle around you and then they slowly follow that circle. The way it would have been better would be so that they come back to you and then they pick out a spot in the circle that's close to them and then they snap to the circle like they're actual flies, like the other flies that, that properly move around you. Unlike how it is now, how they slowly follow their, their place in the circle. So that would have been good. But then again, people tell me they like the iconic sloppy slow movement of those flies. People think I deliberately chose to make them more weighty and you can tell that they're ready to attack. Yeah, maybe they're giving me too much credit. <laughs> if you've seen any kind of Isaac Let's Play, it's pretty likely that you've seen them go after the coveted guppy transformation. All you need to do is get three guppy items and you get the ability to shoot blue flies out of your face all of the time. Isn't that great? Well, unfortunately, you're going to have to take about three deals with the devil, which will consume a lot of your health. But hey, maybe you'll get nine lives out of it, you never know. So anyways, the blue flies deal about as much damage as your tears, so they're really good. Originally I had a function that would tell you how much damage 
a, a single tier would do and I would use it for all the flies and stuff. But Edmund told me no, that wouldn't make sense. Even though you get damage up, that doesn't give everything you have damage. So then we had it that all the familiars would deal a fixed damage. Only later we put in the blue flies and they finally do the damage. <laughs> and that's why the guppy transformation is so powerful. Alright, so anyways, how do I do the important stuff? For example, how do I make the blue flies attack the enemies? And they attack whenever you hit an enemy, there's a chance that the blue flies that fly around you will attack that enemy. Or sometimes if you do, it will spawn a blue fly specifically to attack that enemy. But if it doesn't manage to get to the enemy before it dies, then the fly returns back to you. So generally the blue flies make a pretty convenient army for you that attacks whoever you're attacking and then they end up while staying around until they die, they fight to the death. So if you have a way to respawn them, you're pretty powerful. And similar to how blue flies work for the player, the Duke of Fly equally has an army of flies that surround him and attack him at his command. <laughs> I'm actually pretty proud of this AI behavior that he has. He has very few things that he actually does. He just bounces around the room and then he spits out flies and then he bulges up. And when he bulges up, he sends out his flies to attack you because they fly outwards. So whenever the flies are around him, they just circle around him. But then when he sends them out, they go after you. It's such a cool, simple way of doing it. And the AI of the flies really works well together to create a meaningful challenge. One of my favorite bosses. I'll talk about it more when I talk about boss behavior. So anyways, join me again next time when I talk about homing bullets and general AI. They're connected in some way, I promise. Alright, see you. Subscribe!